Hello, welcome to Flory Models Kit View Time. Today we've got a special hobbies, 172nd scale short Sunderland Mark V, and possibly a turning point in a kit manufacturer. A little bit about that uh, a little bit later on. One thing we do have to say straight off the bat: fighting commies in, in Europe and the Far East. Okay, is that politically correct in this day and age? I just don't know if that's something that's been lost in translation or or what. But obviously, it's a post World uh, War Two. Uh, short Sunderland being the Mark V and there's other variants and as you'll see in a moment this should be a little bit of a trump card for this kit. So as we can see lovely box art um, if you don't know they call it the flying porcupine various things it's one of those things where um, it's such an iconic aircraft very much overlooked I think but when you ever see one of these up close uh, and in museums and things like that they are massive uh, and it's amazing to think that these things can take off from water in the first place uh, let alone bobbing around on it. Uh, but yes, it is a gorgeous aircraft. I think very uh, much overlooked, shall we say, especially throughout World War II, but obviously post-war as well, as we can see on these markings. So you can see in the box, we've obviously got RAF markings and we've got the French one as well. So we got down in here. So having a quick run around on the box, you can see the usual thing down there. Kit number SH72162. And we've got the same on the back and we've got nothing really on the side. So to be honest, there's not a lot to see, but in the box, there it is. And you can get into it. There we go. Always a good sign. We are in. All right. So in the box itself, we can see we've got some decals. Uh, we've got a little bit of um, uh, resin uh, for a little thing there. Oh, we've even got a little bit of photo etch. So that's quite nice. We've got the instructions themselves. And what I'll do is I'll just move that over there. As we can see, usual thing about it, you've got a little bit of um, history on the aircraft itself. Okay. Parts call-outs, as you can see down in here, and the first thing that takes your eye is the big crosses through everything, which means it looks like we've got all the versions in here. Now, I don't know too much about this. Uh, I was talking to Matt about it, and we were saying the only differences we know of uh, is obviously the different types of engines, uh, having the Pratt & Whitney one and the earlier engines into them, and at the back, the observation areas or the turrets. So it looks like it's got them all in here. So if this means you can make all the versions of, because looking through, we've got guns down in here, obviously not used in this version. We've got antennas for obviously anti-submarine warfare with a radar suite. We've got various things, and all of these things seem to point to the fact that actually, you might be able to build all the different versions straight out of the box. Um, obviously, you can need different markings for them and that, but I'm sure the aftermarket guys would be along with this one. But they've done the Mark V, but it does look like the earlier versions, especially the World War II versions, are all in here as well. Um, so quite an interesting uh, little set in there. Anyway, as we can see, first thing off is the instructions coming along leaps and bounds. Full colour instructions now right the way through. And the biggest thing that stands out here, obviously, is we do get a full interior. Now, how much of this we're going to see is anyone's guess, but we've actually got the uh, depth charge or the bomb racks. Uh, these obviously can be rearmed in flight uh, because of the size of this beast. So the racks actually go in and out. So that's one of the things. But obviously up the front, the mid sections, the cockpit, everything else like that, as you can see, are all beautifully recreated with all the bulkheads and everything as you'd imagine right the way through then going right the way through on this one we've got the upper deck the lower deck all being put in looks like we've got spa detail right the way through the interior so it'd be interesting to see that as well and we've obviously got the stuff up the front down in here and then right the way through as you see so there's a lot going on in the inside as well as the outside on this particular one depending obviously if you're going to be having the actual side doors uh, for rearming the actual uh, the bomb racks open or closed you've got those in place as well so going right the way through, it's just a case then of fitting all that lovely work inside and sealing it up, never to be seen again. But there we go, you know it's in there. Then we've got the upper deck as well down in here for obviously the observation or for the turret system uh, at the mid deck. Okay, and then going right the way through here, fitting the guns uh, onto the side, the cockpit ones. We've even got the anchor right the way down to that level of detail uh, on the inside. And then we've got an interior view of that nose section. Uh, for when the turret is retracted okay and then this is what we were talking about the difference being the uh, spine of it uh, on the upper back section depending on which one you're going to be using will be in there but for this one we get the single one to the side okay and then underneath here we've got the actual uh, different type uh, of hull 
system on this one it is interchangeable you do get the other one in there so right the way through we've obviously got the tail and the rudder being fitted in it is posable which is really nice uh, on that one unfortunately the control surfaces for the ailerons uh, and the elevators aren't okay so those in nice big wing spars as well which is absolutely great which means it's going to lock this thing together and hopefully give us a very stable wing join uh, as we make our way into this one so then depending on if obviously you're going to be having the bomb racks and fitted or not various things you obviously got options there landing lights all the way in on this one the engines being fitted down into this one so those are going in there just like that we've got the outer sponsor and systems going in the radar suites being fitted on the outside and obviously the bomb racks depending again if you haven't deployed or not front turrets uh, and the rear turrets obviously being fitted down and putting those in again obviously there's a fairing so it can be retracted or forward uh, for allowing for mooring purposes and then carrying on so we've got things like the inner door inside the door as well section so you can go in there to have the pulley for the winch I assume for the anchor uh, again down in there and then the nose section showing it here with the actual forward turret being retracted to allow access for the mooring point at the front okay and then we've got exhaust being fitted all the way over this one and then a very nice touch with this one as you might expect you do get the beaching gear for this one uh, to pull it out of the water as well so we've got the tail dolly and the wing ones being fitted down onto this uh, as you might imagine right the way through we got some photo etch as well for the actual uh, arms obviously you get two so it's folding them together on the way back okay and then obviously opening up lumps and bumps and holes and various things as you might imagine going right the way down in here for the antenna suite including l11 which is obviously our re uh, resin one that we've got as well then we've got your markings down in here so obviously we've got 209 squadron uh, down in this one right the way through and then we've obviously got our french one over here as well down in here so very nice and then different versions of them uh, as we make our way through okay so three british versions one french on this one in so there we go really really looks nice and this is what we're saying could be the turning point for this because the quality into this one pretty much is on a new level i don't think to be honest we need to get these out because we can see these very nicely in here they don't look too bad at all if we're done and because they're done by cartograph you know they're going to be absolutely gorgeous so we have got those down in there we have got this little bit of uh, resin uh, as you can see down here at the front for that uh, top uh, antenna and obviously this is our photo etch for the actual aileron actuators which you're going to fold in half and you're going to put those in as you make your way through so this is the bit so what we've got down in here is in bags um, a nice resealable bag which is always good makes things a bit easier to get into and the first thing that jumps out to you or certainly does to me is the actual level of detail on this one the actual panel lines are good clean crisp sharp whichever way you want to call them right the way through on this things calling that for stress skin <laughs> uh, but yeah very very nicely done and this is what we're saying this could be a little bit of a step up or sort of you know a new way of looking at this because the level of detail in here is absolutely gorgeous and of course we do get lots of different things going on the interior so certainly down in here we have got some ejector pins in amongst all of this but also we've got locating points for obviously the upper deck and the lower deck things like that we've got various things that can be open or closed in here but generally i think that isn't too bad at all i think that's a really really nice start again it's one of those things you're not going to see much down in here but it is all in here and it's actually pretty nicely done on the other side as well we've got various sections all the way through some of the deck stuff as you can see so actually that isn't too bad at all very very nicely done you can see we've got beautiful work down in here with that short uh, panel line and we don't get any riveting okay but a quick job re-riveting that i don't think would be a problem at all but certainly it is an improvement on the predecessors out there notably being the italian one and then obviously the very very old now and shown definitely its age uh the actual airfix one so very very nicely done as well and this area for doing these got the huge wing spars going through nice flat areas hopefully they'll give a a nice join on those but generally i have to say very nice indeed the wings then carry that theme along and as you can see beautifully recessed details on all of this one it is obviously got the actual uh, access panels down in here you can see them with riveting detail things like that that's very nicely done and then obviously we've got tops and bottoms of these on each one and then obviously we've got various raised 
details in here uh, for the actual over the tails, things like that, right way in. Very nice. And even on the blind side, going to have to do a little bit of clean up on these. I've got a little few uh, uh, mold pins, ejector pins, things like that marks on this one. You probably want to clean them up. But generally, I have to say that's really very nice surface detail on those. Obviously, we've got a match pair being left and right on that one. Then on the next big old bag, in here we get some of these noticeable different versions of it and this is what we were saying so down on this one as you can see we've got two versions down on here again very nicely so we've got the observation bubbles on here or not whichever version you're doing we've got one of the different types it's got the the actual back cut edge into this uh the sort of uh, foil system underneath the hull okay of this one and then you've got the smooth one as well so there is different types and then over here we've got the gun system uh, for the upper turret at the rear and then we've got it obviously then being flushed away so again different versions of this one notoriously done we've actually got the radars uh, down for underneath the wings things like that we've got the instrument panel which actually doesn't look too bad at all some nice good details on those as is the other parts on this one so again we were saying very nicely done this one it's actually quite modular which is the nice touch for it the other thing as well obviously we've got the engines so we've got engines down on here and again got good sharp details on the pots with all the veining the things like that we've got the push rods uh, and stuff like that down in those so that's actually very nice done for the engines and then over on here we've got some of the actual interior so down this is a really nice piece we've got no ejector pins uh, onto this part at all so all that ribbing is showing through absolutely lovely okay and then if we walk our way down you can see we've got the bulkheads the doors and all the interior parts down on this one no problem whatsoever okay and we've got this one in here and again good old big areas and all the ejector pins do seem to be nicely out of the way little thing this flooring detail here is absolutely gorgeous very very nicely done on that one indeed and then over on here we've got the props okay and we've got the floats for the outboards again and we've got the exhausts which are quite nicely detailed okay and the actual engine cowlings and the cow flaps things like that very nicely done and this is beautifully done it's lovely polished work on these you probably see them shining in the light but generally no problem with any of those whatsoever Okay, and then we've got the last bag has got our clear parts, which we're looking at in a moment. And then we've got the beaching gear, the various things on this one, uh, the torpedo bomb racks, things like that. Right the way through, we've got the wheels. Again, nice touch on those. And all of these parts and all the antenna work and everything else. A little bit of burring on all these, you're going to have to do a little bit of cleanup with, but actually, it isn't too bad at all. This beaching gear, no problems at all with that. But generally, I have to say, very nicely done, right the way down to the anchor. And the anchor looks pretty good as well. So, no problem with that. We've got the boarding situation. So, actually, that's very, very nicely done. We've got this little guy down in here, which I assume has got some very nice details down on this, catching it in the light. There we go. See those down in there? And those areas like that. Some more of the internals and the various things going on with this one. So we've got the actual bombs and depth charges, things like that down in there. We've got the racks for them right the way through, the sway braces on both sides of that one. And again, this interior detail is beautifully done, very sharp, very crisp, right the way down to this little guy down in here. Again, good levels of detail right the way over it. And then again, we've got another one. So more of the dolly wheels out the back, the things like this one, and obviously different wheels uh, for making them up because they're twin on each side. Okay, so we've got the yokes, the flight yokes, some of the interior detail, sway braces, some of the communications equipment, things like that in there as well. That's really very, very nice, I have to say. Okay, so last bag, which is... How are we going to get in here? I can hear something chinking around in here, so I'm being a little bit careful. Something is definitely loose. Okay, that's what's loose. Right. So, clear parts. 
actually look very nice. The big one, obviously, straight, looking straight away into the cockpit, that doesn't look too bad whatsoever. The turret, these are the, obviously the side ones uh, which you can go through. They've obviously done this so you can mask up for the portholes and then just spray the rest of it, uh, which is one way of doing it. But if not, you've got all the sort of portholes. We'll call them portholes because it's more like a boat than a plane. Okay, I'm running right the way around on this one. Very nice. So they should just be a push fit or failing that, I assume, Probably my chosen way would be to PVA glue it uh, on this one right the way through. And these turrets, again, crystal clear, good sharp edges on it, so masking it up shouldn't be a problem. Okay, and things like that, which is very nice, especially the canopy front windscreen's very sharp. So either popping a mask set onto that one or doing your own mask should be no problem whatsoever. And there we go. Now you can probably see what I'm saying has basically special hobby just gone up uh, that next level or is this a brand new thing for him? Because to be honest with you, I've reviewed a lot of special hobby stuff over the years and it's always been good. And they've always picked subjects where it's not mainstream. It's a little bit left field perhaps, a little bit limited run almost. So you're almost forgiven some of the, um, the softness in the molding, shall we say, some of the tooling, things like that. It's never been quite up to spec. This little guy, though, is as good as what you're going to find out there. Okay, it's not a AAA title, but at the end of the day, it's definitely up there with them uh, among some of the best ones, definitely. And as for subject matter, I absolutely love it. I think it's a really, really nice one. It's beautiful to see a Sunderland. Obviously, the earlier versions have the combat markings on them and the camo and all the rest of it. This one just tends to have the grey and the white. Uh, but I'm sure you could backdate this one straight out of the box and then just pop your own decals onto it and away you go. It's definitely a must-have. If you're any type of uh, seaplane fan, things like that, you're going to love this one, and this is where you're going to go when you're looking for a Sunderland. So there we go. That's the special hobby, 172nd Short Sunderland Mark V.